Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And welcome to MCCQC, the Love Church, where you and your spiritual journey are always welcome. Today I extend the soaring peace of Jesus to you. Please rise in body or in spirit as you are able and join me in today's call to worship. Praise God who has showered us with love. Even in the dark times, God grows us and guides us. God has blessed us with a magnificent world. In the strife should settle, God call us to be people of kingly and an action to help others. Come, let us worship God who is always with us. Let, Let us praise, praise God that through all our trials and triumphs, God's love gives us hope. provide lively worship and to proclaim God's inclusive love for all. Please join us in a round of applause for our first time guests and all our returning friends who are watching online. In this time of COVID, the way that we share the peace varies once in a while. Today, we are going to share the peace of Christ with a holy kiss. So if there's no one in the room with you, you can look at the camera and know that the kiss of Christ has been passed to you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you all. And also with you. 
This is the first Sunday, and so we honor those who have special days uh, during the month of February. Um, do we have anyone present here who has a special day during the month of February they want to share? And if not, I will tell you that it's my son's birthday during the month of February, so I'm glad to do that. <laughs> Um, and all of those online who have special days, we want you to know that we are celebrating you right now. Let us uh, give uh, recognition to those who have special days during this month. Please join your, uh, extend your hand in a sign of blessing. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for all these special souls and their special days during the month of February. Give them your grace, your peace, your light, and especially today, your warmth, dear God, <laughs> as we celebrate our journeys together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Please make your presence known by leaving a comment on Facebook or emailing Pastor Rich. Despite this horrible pandemic, we continue to be the church. Praise God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your support. It is much needed. Please start or continue your commitment of tithes and offerings to this faith community as we tear down walls and build up love. Thank you for whatever it is that you can do. We also need your email so that we can send our weekly prayers, events, and inspirations to you. You don't want to miss it. Exactly. And I have a couple of extra announcements today. First of all, I want to say thank you for the flowers on the altar um, that are from uh, Michelle Nixon's um, funeral. And we're glad that Dan has uh, allowed us to enjoy these this morning. We need some bright color in our lives. And Amen. They make it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also want to say that um, next Sunday, there are two special things happening. The first is we're having drive-through communion. So for all of you out there who wish to actually see face-to-face -face, uh, some of us and receive communion in a COVID-safe way, um, that will be from 12 to 1 this time after service, from 12 to 1. Right here at NCCQC drive through Tell your friends, uh, all are welcome. And secondly, after the service, or right at the end of the close of the service next Sunday, you're no longer going to see these golden curls. <laughs> <laughs> Linda is going to do her thing. So you don't want to miss that. We'll have fun. <laughs> Let us prepare for our time of prayer.
our hope, our champion, who sees within us all the possibilities, all of the love our souls contain. Reach down now and touch us. Remind us of the eternal truths so that we may soar. Creator God, who is in us and all around us, help us to look within, to quiet all the other voices shouting at us to do things and to pass judgment. May we hear your still, small voice saying, I love you. May we hear your still, small voice encouraging us to love ourselves. May we hear your still, small voice of love in the eyes and the hearts of everyone we meet. Teach us to talk with you as we would talk with a dear, close friend, frequently, sometimes at length, sometimes just listening. Spirit of life, make your presence known to all those on our prayer list. Comfort with your healing energy those who mourn, those who are hungry, the homeless, the restless, the anxious, the fearful, and the sick. Show us our part in the healing process as we ask that your will be done in all our lives. Great teacher, give us the courage to reach out in love and to mount up on ego's wings. Hear now our real cries as we lift our prayers to you. Prayers for the shock deacon, for Kayla. Uh, Scott Beaker. Chris Fuller and Tammy. Thank you, Benson. You can use that for later. Sister Margaret Ewick. We thank you, O God, as in your many names we pray. Amen. chapter 40, select verses. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. <clears throat> to whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of earth. God does not faint or grow weary, whose understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. 
But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Please rise, whether in body or spirit, as you are able, and hear this good news reading from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever. Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, the people brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. May we remember that Jesus cured many, not all, and that healing comes in many forms. Here ends the reading. Please be seated. On Eagle's Wings. Did you know that the lead singer of the Eagles was arrested by customs? Apparently, he was trying to smuggle exotic animals into the country. Turns out, well, exotic animal parts. And it turns out, <laughs> turns out that you can't hide those lion, lion eyes. <laughs> An eagle and a pony walk into a barn. The bartender comes over and the eagle says, I'll have a Budweiser, and my friend Pony here will have a gin and tonic. The bartender says to the pony, why do you let that eagle do all of your talking? The pony points to his throat and says, because I'm a little horse. <laughs> we could do worse than taking direction from an eagle. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Today I get to talk about my favorite topic, spiritual connection and renewal. We heard one of my favorite verses from scripture. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our world needs a new picture of God and humanity. Actually, I'm thinking of a picture that isn't new, but it's never really been integrated well into our spirituality for most of the church. In my dining room, I have a large print of the painting in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo's creation of Adam. And everyone can remember it's God on one side and Adam on the other side, and they're reaching fingers to one another. It's always spoken very powerful to me. And a recent writing by Joan Chittister nailed its power. She says, what are we that you should care for us? The psalmist asks God. The question is still a good one, but the answers have shifted from age to age. When Renaissance artists turned to Greece for inspiration, they left a lesson to the art world that went far beyond the artistic styles of the past. Most of all, they modeled a way of going through life as well. Michelangelo's creation of Adam makes a bold theological statement. The bond between God and Adam in this great work of art was clearly not just based on submission. God reaches out to Adam to call him to life and to deputize him to bring that life to fullness. Adam, in one great glance at God, becomes the bearer of the life of God. Creation becomes then as much a call to human agency as it is an instrument of God's will. 
In this rendering of the relationship between God and humankind, the human being is not weak and sinful or groveling. The human being, strong and virile, is created to be a partner with God in the human enterprise. The human being rises to continue the work of God. Michelangelo proclaims in full color and almost lifelike vigor that to be created is to be called to responsibility, to competency, to effectiveness. In Michelangelo's creation of Adam, the rising awareness of the exalted quality of the human spirit comes through. This new notion of the dignity of humanity shines like a monument to the newly emerging humanism of the age. At the same time, the exaltation of classic theology's awareness that the power of humanity lies in the fact that the spark is what brought life. It belongs not to itself, but to God. That's a constant. As Michelangelo paints, the human spirit pulses with an unfolding awareness of itself. In this new theological moment, the human being begins to be seen as partner, not slave. Powerful, not weak. <clears throat> Capable of grandeur and called to greatness. Creation shimmers with possibility. And now it's happening again. Now in our own time, creation is coming to an even more exciting understanding of itself. Notions of God as manipulator of the universe are disappearing. Now the creator God, according to the science of our time, is understood to have seeded the heavens with life and then allowed the universe to work itself out for the most part, to become life generating, to refuse to wait to be rescued from the evils that creation itself has created. Our time, too, is a monument. It's a moment to take a look at our relationship with God, with the human race, with the world. It's a vibrant and vigorous and visionary world in which whole new concepts of God are struggling to live. And people are struggling to connect. It is a time of new creation. It requires us to rethink everything that we've been taught about human beings and God. And then think again. We must, it seems, not only develop a new picture of God, but we must develop a new picture of ourselves, of humanity. And it's well due in this time of our COVID pandemic. It becomes clearer and clearer in this new picture of humanity, how God cares for us. Today, God calls the church to do the same, to be co-partners in creating a world where everyone is loved. God continues to offer us hope no matter how much sorrow we experience, and God continues to push us forward into missions and ministry when we would rather just curl up with our popcorn and Netflix. There's an urgency to the good news of spiritual connection and healing. People need connection, especially now. When we feel weary, we all would rather default to the familiar or as Jonah did, sit under a tree and wait for things to pass. But Jesus instead tells us, more than ever, this is the time for mission. This is the time for healing. This is your chance to proclaim hope for a different future. Don't let the doldrums keep you from being who God designed you to be. Don't let the familiar keep you from doing the spectacular. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you, on Marley. And as we take that son of redemption and that power of healing, let us apply it to ourselves as we sing, There is a ball in Gilead. Holy One, we breathe in your Holy Spirit and bring out, breathe out all that pollutes, all that is not helpful, all that is not worthy, all that would weigh us down. May the only tether attached to us be the tether of your Holy Spirit. As together we pray in the manner Jesus taught his own disciples to pray. Our Creator in heaven and all around us, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hear now the good news of Jesus the Christ. No matter where you've been on your journey, where you find yourself right now, or where you think you might be headed, our God is a God of love and forgiveness who runs to meet you with open arms. In the name of our Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. God blesses brokenness. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and offered it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus lifted up the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, and offered it to his friends, saying, This is my love poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, remember me. Holy, awesome God, today we remember you. We give thanks in the many ways in which we receive and understand these simple elements of fruit of the vine and fruit of the field, or fail to understand them at all. May they be soul food for our spiritual journeys. In the name of Jesus, the joy giver, amen. amen. Included in that blessing is whatever elements you might have in front of you that you would like to share during this time of Holy Communion. All are welcome.
Jesus to be of service to others, we go from this time together rejoicing in opportunities to serve others in Christ's name. Go in peace, and may the love of God always dwell within you. Yes, Jesus! Go now! <laughs> yeah.